genius. Get onto my show. And so the I would imagine that the excesses that artists were known for in the past are no longer really part of the vernacular anymore. You know, staying at the Ritz and having yeah. you know ten dogs with them, and Pavarotti having three refrigerators and two chefs. Yeah, and, and look, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to lie. Even now, there are a few personalities that um, that it would be hard to distinguish between what is like a cultivated diva. Uh, personality and just kind of like inherent mental illness <laughs> um, <laughs> but but for the most part for the most part um, the artists that you look at and think to yourself this person's clout talent ability to sell tickets over really? over rules w- well and 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 you would say to yourself in that person I would understand very bizarre behavior because at least what they bring to the table is insane but the interesting thing about it is huh. they are never the ones who have it Really? Yeah. The, the the people you think of as the stars of the opera world yeah. today happen to be some of the most professional, nice people in the industry. Is that right? Yeah. It's it, the, the people I'm referring to. Well, I like Placido, I, I for can instance. Ta- I can tell you names I mean, when we stop recording. Sure, but, sure. but the people who I'm talking about as as being still really kind of holdouts from this from this like legendary diva yeah, era, yeah, yeah. Th- these are people like a, a, a notch lower. And so you think, well... Their behavior is probably a response um, to what they see of as like, you know, I- I- uncertainty. Yeah, or insecurity, insecurity in, their, in yeah. themselves. The ones who are secure in their careers, in their talents, the one who, who know what they can do, as, you know, Placido being well, the I prime mean, example. Oh, the nicest, most generous so man nice. you've ever met. I, I mean, there there have been times when I've run into him and, and I, what I know to be on his plate is so overwhelming, right. I can barely breathe. Right. And he looks at me and says... Hi Josh, how are you? How's your mom? Exactly. How's your... And I think, how do you have time for me? Exactly. But one of the nicest, most generous. You know, people. if I rest, I rust. <laughs> that's a, that's his thing, right? I mean, right. it's crazy. Totally. He is so nice. I, I've got a little story. When I I sang uh, the uh, the little bit role in Traviata, yeah, you know where where I introduce yep. Placido for the first time. Um, Giuseppe is the, the little role, and so I go out and I sing my line. And I nail it, you know. I'm, I'm always uh, James and I, uh, Maestro Colin, are you know we're always talking about tempo and trying to because I'm kind of dumb that way. And <laughs> so he, you know, he really helped me out. And I, f- I finally nailed it, and I'm standing there, and this applause erupts. And I thought, holy shit, that's awesome, man! <laughs> like this is a great audience. And of course, I turn around, and there's Placido, like two feet away from me. He'd already entered behind me. And I was kind of deflated, and I walk out like a servant should with his shoulder slumped. <laughs> and uh, so I'm waiting backstage, and Placido does his thing, and then he comes off, and, and he gets his water from his dresser. And, and I come to him, I put my hands on his shoulder, and I said, Maestro, Maestro, did you hear the applause that I got for that? And he was so, he was so nice. He almost spit his water. I said, oh, oh yes, yes, Omar. That was very good, very, very good. <laughs> That's so, so he, funny. I mean, he, is, he really is... Uh, exactly the person that you hope he is. Yeah, and look, I mean, you know, and somebody who um, has dedicated such a massive percentage of his own time over the last how many decades to the careers of other people. Yes. You know, I mean, the the number of stars and young singers alike today who owe everything they currently have to his advocacy. It's incredible. It's just amazing. It is incredible. Now let's talk about the ones who aren't so nice. I don't want you to name any names, but I mean, when I've been here, this is my 11th season. And even as a chorister, we've all seen some shenanigans with yeah. some of the principals. How do you how do you deal with that? And does that damage their reputation here? Like, would you hire them back, um, even though they misbehaved in some way or pissed people off along the way? Well, um, how, how does that work? All right, you know the 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 I'm I'm compelled to start by responding that um, um, as a former singer, yes. Um, as you know very well. Remind me to get to that, because that's another interesting topic. Um, You know, I I know firsthand, as do you, that there is... um, Enormous pressure. Yes. Here's my theory, and yes. it's and 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 it's completely unsubstantiated, but nonetheless, it's mine. Mm-hmm. Mine. Um, um, there is enormous external pressure mm-hmm. on delivering a product that is reliant on a very kind of insecure mucous membrane in That's the throat. Right. That shift that is shifty. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, of course, as you actually learn vocal technique and learn how to sing, you begin to realize it is not entirely chance. It's mm-hmm. not all like you know, mm-hmm. um, like a, a cup of coffee that was too strong that resulted in dehydration, resulting That's from right. air conditioning, resulting That's, from. Oh, man. Boy, it's I not, went through that. Right. Yeah. It's Oof. not all that. I mean, once you once you start to learn how to sing, you begin to. 
realize, oh, even with all that, I can still These do These are my this. parameters. Yeah. I can do this thing. Yeah. yeah. Nonetheless, it is shifty and it is difficult and it's a huge amount of pressure and it feels, you know, and, and what it feels like to, I mean, here's what I always say. There are a huge number of people in this business who have learned and cultivated a massive knowledge of vocal arts. Um, Pedagogy. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. there are. But here's what I always say. You either know what it feels like to crack on stage or oh, you don't. Boy. Oh, boy. You know, because there are a lot of people in this industry doing casting and doing artistic planning that that um, didn't come from a vocal background. That's right. And so um, so I always think, no, it is possible, of course, you know, historically legendary um, people in the industry didn't start off as singers. Mm-hmm. So they just cultivated a knowledge, a firsthand knowledge of it somehow. Right. But at the same time, you and me... We know what it's like to get up there and to say, and just, "I'm about to oh inhale boy. and scream in yeah. front of three thousand people, yeah. and it's going to either and go I'm well cross or cross my not. fingers and toes." <laughs> right, <laughs> and um, and so so that that engenders in my mind such an enormous amount of sympathy for the people who behave poorly that I um, you understand it. I really feel like. Uh, you know, one example would be we had an artist who just absolutely, even though there were elements to a show that dictated a certain costume piece, yes. like, 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 ju- you know, just to be very vague, and I'm sorry to be so no, vague. No, of course. But, no, no, no. Um, like, you know, let's say a scene took place, like, you know, in the mountains in winter outside. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. that would that would necessitate the wearing of a coat. Right. Right. Um, um, but we had an artist who just like, I'm making this up again, but yes, just like yes. in that instance refused to wear a coat. Yes. And it became this huge thing and it looked really bizarre because that person was the only one on stage without a coat. Everyone else was shivering and there were snowflakes falling or whatever. Right, right. And um, and so, you know, everyone's going kind of nuts. And then I, I just I just pulled that person aside and said, and said you know, um, how are you feeling about everything? 